I promise I'll wait for you The midnight hour I know you'll shine on through I promise myself It's just about, we're just on the, the eve of uh, your next album coming out, which I understand is going to be called Move Until We Fly. Right, yeah? I actually haven't had a chance to even listen to it or know much about it, as anybody else in the moment in Italy has had still. But uh, can you tell us a bit about it? Sure. Um, that stink. Where did it all begin? I guess about a year and a half ago when uh, I had uh, kind of stopped doing the rounds from the last record and... Uh, what, that was us? The us album, album yeah, yeah, and um, I guess I was pretty disappointed the way that album had gone. And um, took some time off, decided I'd take some time off to just, you know, rethink about exactly what I wanted to do and how I wanted to... If I even wanted to make a third album, how I wanted to go about it, I guess. Yeah. I just needed time for myself. And yeah. at that period, I had um, a few personal problems of my own. And my best friend um, was very sick. And I went back to London and decided to move back to London and uh, spend a lot of time with him. And um, started to put the album slowly together from there. And the song Move Until We Fly, well, the whole album, really, is dedicated to, to him. Um, it's about life and death. Was there a moment when you were thinking of giving up then the kind of, well, the giving up the kind of musical career side? Mm, not really. I just knew I, knew I needed to check out for a while and just um, seriously have a think about it and look back on what had gone before and not really knowing what, you know, where I was going to go from there. But um, the beginning of the year, I. Uh, I went to school for a while. I decided to enroll in a class, an acting class, for a few months, and um, just to get my head into something else, and just to, uh, I guess, uh, lose myself, and, and also to learn something new or a new direction, just to uh, give me confidence and give me some kind of strength. Mm -hmm. And um, by doing that, it just completely turned my head around, and uh, I, well, I knew from then I needed to get back and make music, and that excitement to want to make music and yeah. came back the buzz so uh, That's good. that was great and um and from then kind of april may april may yeah june started to work on the album and um What kind of musical influences do you think are reflected in this third album? I guess... I mean, I listen to a lot of R&B, a lot of... Uh, I guess I listen to a lot of 70s music. I was checking a lot of uh, later Marvin Stuff that Gaye, you grew up later on, Marvin. Well, no, not really. That, uh, funny enough, even though that was my, my uh, teenage... You know, from 16 onwards, the 70s. Um, I was listening more at that time to, uh, I guess, Weather Report and people like that in the 70s, yeah. to be honest. I feel my brothers, I got into like jazz fusion at that time. But um, 
So I missed a lot of 70s music and a lot of, say, the disco or the, the soul music at that time, but picked up on it kind of in the 80s, if you like, really checking out Marvin Gaye, Barry White, Sly Stone, and people. You know. You know, get to gear with it. You've got uh, an elder brother, isn't it? Chester, yeah, Chester, yeah. Guitarist who's, well, I suppose everybody knows he's played with, you know, Brian Ferry and all this kind of stuff. And, I mean, but do you ever get together with him? Do you ever collaborate? Do you ever ask him for any ideas? Yeah, I have done in the past, and he got to play finally on on the record, on one of the tracks at least. So, and uh, yeah, we have done in the past, I guess. Uh, our tastes and our directions are some slightly different angles, but um I think about my life without someone like you bring me your love, show me your heart, tell me you can't say no. There's only so much time before I lose my mind. So bring me your love. What do you think of, him, of your music? Yeah, he's into it. He's into the new, the new stuff. I know that. He's definitely into the new tracks. That's the reason why he played on it. <laughs> That's good. Cool. So that was good. Um, but I've always, we've always had a, a tight relationship, you know, from from childhood. Been always following his career. And, you know, when I was really small, he was he was playing in bands and um, just introducing me to everything he was listening to. So I kind of missed out a lot of the, uh, I guess, uh, the pop around at the time in my early childhood because I would listen to what he was listening to. Yeah. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix was like the first thing I, yeah, I heard and people like that. And he's, everything was guitar orientated. If it didn't have a guitar solo, then we didn't want to listen to it. <laughs> All right, yeah. And that soon reversed because I just started to think about singing myself. Have you Trevor Horn, right? Interesting. Uh, didn't work out as well as it had, to be honest. But uh, you know, he has his way of working. And Is he very dominant figure? I mean, does he just literally take the song and does what he wants with it? Or do you find that yeah. you, you feel powerless? Uh, it's not even a question of, of whether you, what you feel. <laughs> that's how he works. That's uh, all Trevor and that's it. Because um, remember, you know, Frankie goes to Hollywood, so that that's what they found. I heard you on the wireless back in 52 Lying awake and Santa tuning in on you If I was young it didn't stop you coming through It, but I thought he might take it somewhere else and just blow me away and it didn't, didn't happen. But, um, and I worked with Andy Richards, which was interesting and we did a few, some good things with Andy. But the bulk of the album I, I uh, put together with two friends, uh, Toby Anderson and Kadir Geary, young chaps in town. Toby used to be the fifth member of Curiosity, called a cat, keyboard player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, they got a little studio, local, eight-track studio, Low Town. And um, that's kind of where I started um, put laying down the demos and, you know, just working on ideas. And um, we ended up doing most of the stuff there. <laughs>
The irony of your career is that, you know, there you are, English, you know, London lad and all the rest of it, but funnily enough, I mean, you've made more of a stir outside Britain in Europe than actually at home. So I suppose walking around the streets of London, you're not so much of a, a star as you are walking around the streets of Rome. True or false? True. Yeah, I like that. Good. 
I wouldn't like maybe in the future to um, to work in, you know, work on a film maybe, or, but, but there's no way I could drop the music for, for the acting. And I got that spark back from going to the acting. It gave me the confidence to I knew to go on, to, you right, know, to yeah. go on, and just. Together and tour this I album. hope so, yeah. We're talking about it now and looking towards the end of the year. I promise myself, I promise I'll wait for you. The midnight hour, I know you'll shine on through. That would be a great thing for your credibility, wouldn't it? I mean, as, as opposed to being well, it would be a great Nick thing for just to do stuff to play back, you know, to sure. get to see Nick um, actually live. It would. It's something I need to do. Mm. I want to do, and that's that's it, really. That's all I can think about. Um, whatever people say, it doesn't. You know, like I said before, I can't. I can't take take that on. But all I know is I need to play live, and uh, I'm getting it. You know. Get it I'm getting itchy. Now, I said last year I wouldn't, it didn't happen, so uh, this year I'm going to, you know, keep my fingers crossed that the records do continue to, to shift because that helps. No, I'm in love with you. 